and welcome to this week's YouTube video. Today I'm going to show you part two of how I painted Mark and Finn Finn. I will show you part three next week. So if you haven't watched part one, then have a look at it on my channel. This painting was done in three layers over multiple sittings. So let's get into the time lapse video and I will talk about what I am doing as I go along. As I am working on paper, the painting is drying quite quickly, so this is not really wet on wet painting. This is pretty much why I have to cover the painting three times, because to get the effect I want, the paint needs to be wet enough to drag areas into each other. Had I have done this on canvas board, I would have had much more time to work on it before the painting started to dry. The colours I am using are cadmium yellow, yellow ochre light, cadmium red, elysian crimson, burnt umber, ultramarine deep and ivory black. I am using both a rich black which is mixed from ultramarine deep and burnt umber and also ivory black. For Mark's face I am using my rich black. I have also mixed up a warm dark brown using my rich black plus cadmium red. I have mixed up two oranges, one with yellow ochre light and cadmium red and one with yellow ochre light and elysian crimson. For my really light colour I have mixed my two oranges together, added some of my warm brown plus my rich black. I have then added a large amount of white. So this colour is a combination of these four colours mixed together. I am using this palette to paint the skin, arms and hands. When painting skin, the three things that are really important is correct value, correct temperature and correct edges. For each area, ask yourself, how dark is it? On my palette, I have two darks, a rich black and a lighter warm black. As the light in my reference photo is cool, I know my shadows will be warm. For these areas, I will use a warm black. But notice how my mid-tones begin to cool in temperature in the beard area. On my palette, I have warm, 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 cool and cool. Therefore, I need to lighten my brown and cool it down by adding some of this colour. If it is not cool enough, I will need to add a bit of blue to my mixture. This will give me this cool colour here. As I move around, notice how the temperature begins to warm up again. But look at how close in value these two areas are. I am using both my oranges in this area. Mixing my cad red and my yellow ochre light with a little of my warm brown will give me a skin tone that is warmer and more saturated in colour than a mix of my warm brown, elysian crimson and yellow ochre light. I am looking at my reference photo and trying to decide where I should use these different mixes. It is just a case of looking at your object and understanding the colour and the temperature of what you are looking at and then mixing this up from your palette. If you struggle to understand this, the issue will be either that you do not know how to mix the colour or you do not understand what you are seeing or both. Understanding how to mix colours can be learnt over time from repetition and practice. Don't feel bad about not knowing this. Colour theory is very complex and hard. It is the thing that most of my students struggle with the most and it takes a long time to get really good with a palette. I am still very much learning with mine but all I know is that I am better with it now than I was a year ago. So keep practicing and you will get better. There are also tricks you can use to help you. For mid-tone colours, I tend to hold a mid-grey card up to my object. The mid-grey card helps me to see the blue, yellow or red in the object. For lighter objects, I hold up a white card and again it helps me see the red, yellow or blue in what I'm trying to paint. You can also try loading up a palette knife and holding it next to the object to compare the colour on your knife to that of your object. However, I find this one less effective than using a card. The other method I like to use is to just dab a little paint onto my canvas to see how the colour looks before I commit myself to using it. 
For the highlights, I am using white with a tiny amount of rich black and some alizarin crimson. Remember that as I have established that my reference photo has cool light and my shadows are warm, my highlights must be cool. This is where holding a white card up to my reference photo really helps me see the value and the colour. Initially, I think it is white, but my card says no. It is slightly darker than white and there is colour in it too. Just be aware that our eye can play tricks on us and it's always worth checking if you are not sure. I paint the arms and the hands no differently to the face. I am breaking them down into blocks of colour, shape, value and temperature. I am using exactly the same palette as I did for the face. The thing I struggled with the most was that I kept going off with my drawing in this area. There is quite a bit of complexity to those shapes. Getting the hand placement and finger placement correct was really hard and you'll see in next week's video that I had to go in and fix them several times. Not appearing to overwork a painting is not the same as actually overworking the painting. I think in the end that bottom hand took me five attempts. I didn't film all of them due to the length of editing the video. I would have been editing it forever and only have one day to make these videos a week. You can have multiple attempts at an area as long as you remove the paint that was there before. Don't keep adding paint on paint else you'll end up with a mess. As this was on paper, I just wiped my effort off and had another go. The red t-shirt that Mark is wearing is the most saturated colour in the painting. It is naturally going to be prominent, plus it is surrounded by neutrals, so I need to edit my painting so that it does not dominate the composition. I have therefore decided to edit out the creases and pretty much edit out the text. I am squinting down at my reference photo and this is making it impossible to see the detail. I am then painting only what I see and the result is that I am suggesting the detail rather than focusing in on it. I am mixing both my cadmium red and alizarin crimson together to give me that really saturated red of the t-shirt. Cadmium red on its own is too orange and alizarin crimson on its own is too dark and cool. By mixing them together it is giving me the right colour I need. If you need to take the punch out of a saturated colour you can try adding either a tiny amount of your rich black, a tiny amount of ivory black or I can neutralise it with a complementary colour. So here I would have used a green. So I could have used that khaki green I had mixed up for the sofa, which was a rich black plus yellow ochre light. For my shadow areas, I added quite a bit of my rich black to my red, but made sure my rich black had more of a brown leaning. Remember my shadows are warm. For the highlighted areas of the t-shirt, I added a little white to my mix. I also made sure my red had more of an alizarin crimson leaning. Remember, my light is cool, so my highlights will also be cool. Elysian Crimson is a cooler red than Cadmium Red. Also, remember it is really important before you start your painting to decide which areas you want to focus in on. My painting will look more painterly if I do this. So really, all this area here is unimportant. It doesn't really add anything to the emotional connection between Finfin fin and Mark. I could have got away with painting much less detail and I probably would have if I had done it again. I was so focused on trying to get that area correct, I forgot about what I was trying to achieve with the painting. An ability to paint it more accurately and a bit more confidently would have achieved this. But I accept my skill level isn't there yet so I will just keep practicing and hopefully it will come with time. In this painting I want Fin Fin's nose to be my darkest punchiest area because it is in the foreground. I want my viewer to look at it first. I will use my darkest black here, my rich black in these areas here, here and here and my most muted ivory black in Fin Fin's ears. So I basically have three blacks which I can use three different ways. 
I have tried removing ivory black from my palette, but found I just could not live without it. Sometimes only black will do. I have found black by itself is more subtle than a rich black. I have also found that by adding Elysian crimson to my ivory black, this gives me my darkest dark, which I use very sparingly and reserve for areas I want to be really punchy. Understanding how the different colours on your palette can subtly affect your mixing is really important for producing paintings that look realistic. I don't think there is any real shortcut for learning this. It's just continuous practice with the same palette that is key. You can, if you want, limit your palette. This will really help in learning how to mix colours. I did this myself. A couple of years ago, after reading up on the Zorn palette, I decided I was going to work with this restrictive palette of ivory black, yellow ochre, cadmium red and white. I used this palette and only this palette for just under a year. I really got to understand it. You can make a lot of colours with just four tubes of paint. I then introduced cadmium yellow, Elysian crimson and ultramarine to my palette. I took away my black and mixed my rich black from my three primaries. I did this for about six months. I have to confess I struggled with this a lot more than with just four colours. I found mixing my neutrals really time consuming but persevered for as long as I felt I could. By doing this, it really helped me to get a good understanding of my palette and now I have a pretty good idea of what colours make what. It also helped me decide what brown to add to my palette. This palette really works for me and I find it really flexible. I should say though that if I were painting foliage, I would probably add Viridian. But if you struggle with haphazard colour mixing, you might want to consider limiting your palette for a while and building in colours slowly. You may have noticed that I am sticking quite heavily to my long haired coma brush. For the second and third layer, my brush selection becomes much more important. The coma brushes are long and soft, so it allows me to brush the paint on very softly. I also do not really need to worry about hard edges, as these brushes help give the soft painterly feel I want. I really like these brushes and use them in my process all the time. I am using a little bit of linseed oil on this layer. I pour out literally about a teaspoon onto my palette. I use very little, but sometimes I just want to make a colour a bit more pliable, especially my opaque colours. Because my paper is still quite absorbent, I find even with linseed oil, the paint still dries pretty quickly. For this area of the sofa, all the colours I add will be warm in temperature because it is all in the shadows. However, I need to be careful that I still vary my warm temperatures even within this area and I don't treat everything the same. So for example, these areas are not as warm as this area here. Whilst I have a lot of warm colours in this area, it is all in relation to the object next to it. If I treat everything the same and do not vary my temperatures enough, I will end up with muddy colours. Muddy colours occur when you place too many warm temperatures together. I need to make sure I keep looking at my reference photo and trying to correctly observe what I am looking at. If you are struggling, try standing back and comparing your painting with your object. If you are working from a photo, I would recommend printing it out to the same size as your canvas. Moving on to painting Finfin, fin, I actually found him much more difficult to paint than Mark, even with struggling with Mark's hands. Finfin fin was much harder. This is because I only really struggled with one aspect of Mark's hands, which was the drawing. I knew if I sorted the drawing, I could sort the value and the temperature too. Finfin fin was much harder because I was grappling with both the value and the temperature, and both of these were incredibly subtle. If I turn the finished painting into black and white, you will see how incredibly close the values are across his fur. His form is controlled by the temperature shifts, 
And if you look at the finished painting, you will see how incredibly subtle these shifts are. I have a cooler area here that then goes warmer in this area here. As I move across, it then becomes cooler in this area here. But this area is still warmer than this area here. As I move onto his leg, this area is cooler. I would say closer to this area here, but a different colour. And then finally, the highlighted areas are his coolest parts. I also have to contend with the reflective light from the sofa in these areas here and here. This will also affect my temperatures and obviously colour. And this is why I think white objects are the hardest to paint accurately, because they take on all the colours surrounding them. Let's look at the palette I used to paint Finfin fin as it gets really quite tricky at this point. Other than the black on his nose, the black in his ears and the spot on his head, I will not touch my ivory black again. I need to ensure that I have as much colour in my grey as possible. I have mixed up a rich black and opened up the colour with white. This is my base grey which I will add all my colours to in varying amounts. And this is where my eye really begins to trick me into thinking that I am seeing a much cooler grey than I actually am. I know this because I keep holding my white card against my reference photo to check. Let me show you my palette at a far more developed stage. You will see how much brown is on there in relation to grey. There is far more warm temperatures than there are cool. You also may notice that it is very similar in colour to the palette I used to paint Mark, but with one crucial addition, cadmium yellow. Whilst I use cadmium yellow quite a bit for painting Finfin, fin, it is only in certain areas. So here, here and here. Everywhere else I use my yellow ochre light coupled mainly with Elysian crimson. I use cadmium red in a few areas here, here and here. So it is really important that I understand the difference using my cadmium red and my cadmium yellow will make to my mix. I must confess it took me a while to figure it all out. At this stage in the painting, I am not always certain about what I am seeing, especially when it comes to white objects. And I begin to push my colours too far towards purple. And I realise this, so I decide to stop and leave his face pretty much untouched. I could see my colour choice was going a bit wrong. When this happens, I find the best thing is to step away from the painting or to start on another area. The worst thing I can do is to try and push through it because if I am not sure, what I end up painting is a confused mess. I think painting takes so much concentration. If I am honest, I would liken it to sitting an exam. I used the same level of concentration as I did in my final exams when I sat my law degree. That is why I can only do blocks of three hours at a time, because I find it takes up so much brain power. Three hours is pretty much my maximum. And when I've hit my maximum, I begin to lose concentration. When I lose concentration, it all starts to go wrong. I've painted under those conditions enough times to know that the outcome is never good for me or the painting. My levels of frustration are so intense, sometimes I think I may throw the canvas out of the window. Obviously, I never do, but still, it is not really a good state to be in for painting well. The point I am making is that in order to correctly observe what I am seeing, I need to be totally focused and thinking about what I am doing. If I am confused about what I am seeing, what colours I need to mix, I need to step away from the painting and figure it out. Sometimes this may mean that I have to experiment with some paint away from the easel to figure out my colours. Sometimes I take a photo and go home and view it on my laptop next to the reference photo so I can compare like for like at a smaller size. And sometimes I just need to go home and do something else. Fresh eyes the next day may sort it out, especially if it is a focus issue. Here I moved on to another area and started Fin Fin's ears. I could see my values, temperatures and colours clearly in this area 
and then took the decision to start on my third layer and work on Mark again before having another go at Fin Fin. I will show you this third layer next week and explain how I got from this to this. I hope you have enjoyed today's video and found it useful. Please like and subscribe if you can and check out my website sarahhallidayart.com where you will find examples of my work and also details of online classes that I run. Thank you for watching and see you for the next one.